Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Backwood Solar YouTube video. Today's video is going to be a follow-up to our part one servo video. In that video, we cover the external connections, ports, and features of the servo. In this video, we're going to cover the programming setup and internal features. Let's get into it. First off, in today's video, I want to mention if you had any questions about the ports, the connections, any of the external features of the Serbo, down in the description will be linked to our video on part one of our Serbo series, where we go over in detail the ports, the connections, terminal blocks, and all the external features that the Serbo has to offer. Otherwise, in this video, we're going to cover initial setup, powering, programming, and internal connection features that the servo utilizes. As you can see here on the face of the servo, there are a couple indicator lights. Once you power up the servo to indicate the status or activity of the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth connections. You can see here as indicated the Wi-Fi access point. This is the, the access point or the Wi-Fi signal that the servo is producing for, to allow a direct connection directly to the servo. This can be disabled internally in the software. We'll go through that. Uh, as you can see here, if the internal uh, Wi-Fi is being generated or you have access available, you have a green light, orange light means that access point is disabled or uh, turned off. And then below here, you'll see our Bluetooth activity light as well as status of that Bluetooth signal. When first powering up the servo, this is what you should expect to see from the indicator lights. First, you'll see there a orange blinking light for the Wi-Fi, indicating that the Wi-Fi is being initiated. Which should then quickly here change to a green. Shortly after that, you should see the Bluetooth light illuminate. This blue and green blinking is what you should see when first powering up your servo. The first option you have to interact with the servo once initiated and booted up completely is to use one of the Victron GX50 or GX70 touch display interfaces. Again, as covered in the first video, you'll use this HDMI port along with one of the USB ports for power and you'll have direct interaction control and programming with that display that will allow you to connect uh, Wi-Fi networks as well as do some basic programming and setup of the servo, the servo's relays, generator start-stop, and a variety of other features. The next most common way people connect to the servo is via the Bluetooth connection the servo is providing. Once you launch Victron Connect, you should see the servo pop in, along with any of the other Victron devices in your system that are transmitting Bluetooth. It's important to note Bluetooth items will have a signal strength icon. This is the Bluetooth connection signal strength. Then at that point, you're just going to click on the device or tap on the device you want to connect to, in this case, the servo. And we're going to put in the pin code as provided on the label. This label is found on the side of the servo or in the packaging with the servo. Once connected via Bluetooth into the servo, you'll get some basic product information here, a button to visit the online portal if that's set up. Uh, but most importantly here in the upper right corner, we have a gear icon. Clicking on that gear icon, we'll have a network tab. Click on the network tab, and this will give us access to allow the servo to connect to your local Wi-Fi networks. Down here, you have the ability to turn on and off the internal access point. So this is the Wi-Fi signal that the servo is generating. Here you can see the SSID, or the network name the servo is generating, as well as the uh, password for that network. You also have some basic information about IP address as well as the status of the Ethernet port. Once you connect the servo and your device to the same network and you back out to the device list, you'll find now the servo will have two versions. You'll see the original version with the Bluetooth signal strength, but we have a second version that'll be a network connection version. 
When you connect to the networked version now, you'll have some additional options, including remote console, which effectively gives you the ability to turn your phone, device, tablet, or computer into a touchscreen interface, identical to the features that you would have in the program that you would have if you had purchased a GX50 or GX70 touch. The last way to connect to the Serbo is to make a direct Wi-Fi connection from your device directly to the Serbo's Wi-Fi. So in this case, you'll go to your, your device's Wi-Fi settings, search for other networks, and find the Serbo's SSID here being transmitted. In this case, it's always going to start with a Venus followed by the serial number. You're going to go ahead and click on that and enter the password this password, this SSID password, is found both on the label of the Serbo as well as um, on the Bluetooth connection. Once connected to the Serbo, you will go ahead and relaunch Victron Connect. Once loaded, you'll see here as well, we'll have the same Serbo with the network ID as with no signal strength icon. So you can see the servo here connected with just the network ID. We can click on that. Once we do, we have the same remote console option as we have uh, through the other connection methods. After connecting via remote console on your device, you should be greeted with something that looks like this. We have an overview as well as some interaction buttons here to the right. Um, because you're using a standard web browser to launch this remote console, a good little tip here is not only can you use the IP address of the Serbo to connect, but always venus.local is kind of a shortcut to go directly to um, the remote console. Again, we have to be on the same network or directly connected to the Serbo's Wi-Fi for, for this remote console to work. Uh, we can also do this via the, the VRM online portal, uh, which is completely remote and we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. Uh, however, um, here initially kind of have a flow of the system components if connected. Uh, if not, the major thing we want to do initially once we connect into the Serbo is to either tap on the screen or click on the screen. We'll see the pages in the menu slide up from the bottom. Or over here on the right hand side, we could use the enter key to get this menu to slide up from the bottom. But effectively, the first thing we want to do here is touch or tap on the screen, hit the menu button. In here, we'll have our device list. If there's any devices connected or any notifications, they'll show up here. Um, but in this case, we're going to go directly into the settings. And then we're going to go into the firmware tab. I think the ver uh, very first important thing to do with any new servo install is to update the firmware. Uh, this one here, as you can see, is 2.91. Um, we're now currently in the mid um, three, so 3.52, somewhere in that neighborhood. And since this point, this former version, there's been a ton of uh, quality of life features that have been added, as well as a new display uh, GUI, graphical user interface, GUI interface that's available now. Um, so to initiate that update, we're going to go ahead and click on online updates. Uh, we're going to here uh, go ahead and hit press to check if we don't have an update shown here as available. In this case, we do 3.54, um, so you can go ahead and press that to update. Once the update downloads and installs, the server is going to automatically reboot itself. Once it's rebooted and back up, we should be able to move forward to the next step. Backwood Solar is America's oldest and most trusted solar retailer with nearly 50 years of experience. Head over to our website, backwoodsolar.com, to get a free copy of our planning guide. While you're there, check out our learning center with articles on setup, sizing, tax credits, and so much more helpful information, especially if you're just getting started with solar. There are also links provided in the description.